Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Ilse Samarripa and this is the world space. Guys, I'm very, very excited because you voted on the survey and you decided you actually want to see more of the things I really love doing. One thing that I absolutely adore is locomotion, biomechanics and developing your eye for animation and you seem to really enjoy it so I'm really happy to do this. Don't forget that we have a new Discord channel. If you want to get in contact with me and other world spacers just check it out. I will leave you the link in the description down below. When you go out to the streets you're probably not gonna see a lion or a horse right away but you are definitely gonna see birds. So that is something that you really have to learn to animate because it's something that's so common in your lives. And flying creatures or birds are always present in feature film, in VFX productions, in commercials, TV. It's a very important topic. So today we're going to be speaking about how birds fly. We're going to be talking about the physics of how birds take off, the difference between large wings, small wings, different body proportions. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so first I'm gonna be showing you a little bit about how physics affect the wings of a bird. So you can imagine a bird's wing sideways. This shape that it forms is called an airfoil. It's also widely used for plane engineering and one thing that you really want to understand is that the wind on top of the wing, as it passes it gets bent, whereas the wind below stays kind of in the same angle. That produces a phenomenon called lift. So that means means that when there's fast air on top of the bird and slow air at the bottom, it gives the body of the bird a lifting action. And here's a little experiment. Let's pretend this tissue is the wing of a bird. I'm gonna fold it a little so it has a little form like this, right? The speed of the air here goes faster. It bounces because of the little curve that I was producing. And that makes the tissue lift. Woo! As the speed or the thrust of the bird goes higher, the lift increases exponentially. For any nerds out there, this is a direct square relationship, which means that if you increase the speed of the air by two, the lift will increase by four. That's why we see them go to the top of the trees and stay there because when they want to fly again they just jump off the tree extend their wings and without having to flap a lot there's a lot of lift generated thrust is the force with which the bird moves forward forward thrust can be created by gravity or even by themselves when they move their wings in a particular way when the bird is not going very fast, it doesn't have a lot of momentum going forward, not a lot of thrust. They need to flap their wings in different ways to elevate their body. That's what you see, for example, in takeoffs or in landings. Jump a little off the ground and they move their wings up and down. But instead of going like this, they go like this and move their wing forward and down and then up in eight motions to push upwards and then go forward. So what you need to keep from this is that when a bird is not going fast, it's gonna push its wings forward more in the downstroke in order to gain lift. In proportion, when birds have a large body and small wings, they need to push more air, like pigeons. That's why when pigeons fly, they sound like because they flap too much. But when you contrast it with a barn owl, which is one of the birds that pushes the least amount of air, we can see the large wings it has and the small body it has and that generates an easier lift in general. I went to the beach and I was observing pelicans and it's very interesting because they're flying and they're kind of observing the ocean and when they see a fish, they kind of try to stop, try to break and stop moving forward, stop having thrust and it's the opposite motion. It goes like... <laughs> now, when birds are flying, their wings take more time to go up and less time to go down, right? Wrong. Very wrong. That is a mistake animators do all the time. And it's because they don't observe the birds in slow motion. It takes naturally longer for the bird to push its wings down, rotate the hummers up, wait for the radius and the carpals to catch up, and then they push down again. The ratio between the downward stroke and the upward stroke varies. If it's a larger bird, it can take half of the time for its wings to go up. But if it's a bird that has 
small wings compared to the size of its body, like a parrot, for example, you would see more like one, two, one, two, one, two strokes, like in the same amount of frames almost, almost consistently, one, 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 one. So all these concepts combined can really help you if you're animating any kind of flying creature. And if you're gonna be animating a bird, really check out which type of bird resembles your model so you can really study things in slow motion and try to understand how many frames it takes it to go down, up, and what is the bird doing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you never miss a world space video, hit that notification bell. Please let me know down in the comments if you like this video, if you found it useful some things that you knew some things that you didn't know i love reading your comments don't forget that we have a new discord channel where you can chat with me with other world spacers for free and don't forget rikingo is a site where you can download many different tools and tutorials if you are an animator if you want to learn scripting if you want to even learn how to make your own video game it doesn't matter if you're highly experienced or you're new to the industry there is content for all kinds of cg artists you can see these tools being used over and over again in the pipelines of the most important studios around the world. My subscribers and I get a 20% discount in any purchase. There's even free stuff to play around with. I will leave you guys a link in the description down below. Make sure to check it out. For a more detailed conversation with me and for exclusive content like asking questions, having Zoom meetings with me, getting personal animation tutorials and more, just check out my Patreon. I will leave you a link in the description down below. For each dollar I receive, a percentage will serve to rescue stray dogs and cats. And you will unlock new content every week, so please check it out. Help me, help the channel and become a VIP world spacer. Thank you all so very much for watching and keep making art, you beautiful artists.